1340 96.5 KVGC, seven minutes after the hour. Again, the uh, latest from the Tuolumne Cal Fire uh, unit. Uh, spokesperson uh, Emily Kilgore, the Walker Fire, uh, 1,000 acres, zero containment. Uh, these figures are actually of uh, last night. Uh, fire broke out about 5 o'clock along a Walker Trail near uh, New Hogan Dam Road, south of uh, New Hogan in the Salt Springs area of Calaveras County. And Cal Fire fighting this along with local fire crews throughout the uh, night and are back on it uh, again this morning. And uh, we thought we would call in our uh, resident wildfire expert, Cal Fire Division Chief Rob Withrow this morning. Rob is with the Amador El Dorado unit of Cal Fire, is not involved in the, uh, what you call it, management of the fire, the IC of the fire? Yeah, the incident command of the yeah, fire. Yeah, the incident command of the fire, even though uh, we do have some of our units are there, right, Rob? That's correct. We're absolutely yeah. supporting them, and we have resources there. I'm just not directly involved. Right. So what, what we want to ask you about today, Rob, is the fire, because a lot of folks now have uh, been using that alert wildfire uh, fire cameras. Yep. And even us, we've been watching it since it first broke out. We're watching it through the night, even this morning. And early this morning, you could see where there was like these big boom, like almost explosions, uh, and flames would come up, and we would see big puffs of, uh, you know, plumes of smoke. And now it's kind of died down, but I think actually what's happened is it's gone into a valley, you know, into a, the terrain here. But, right. um, you know, what are we looking at, Rob, when when we look at something like that? Is it is it hard to really tell the the movement and uh, action of the fire from a camera like this? Well, it is and it isn't. Um, you know, one of the things that we talk about with fires is we like to look at the smoke column, and, and as firefighters, we can learn quite a bit from it. And a couple things, <clears throat> excuse me one sec, Jim. Sure. I apologize. That's all right. You're all choked up. See, we got you all. We're talking about there's, something. There's not even any smoke here. <laughs> um, in any case, we look at the smoke column, and a few things we can tell is, one, if when you see it really pushing into the air like you did yesterday when that fire started, mm -hmm. and it's real forceful shooting up into the atmosphere, it's got a lot of energy behind it. Obviously, that tells us there's a lot of heat. You know, it's consuming a lot of fuel. How dark the column is. A lot of times that indicates it's into a heavier fuel. A grass fire is going to be a little more white, you know, gray, if you will. Sure, sure. When that column lays over, meaning when it, when it leans over to the side, that's a good indicator. Obviously, it's got a wind on it. The wind um, is tricky because you, just like you were talking about it going behind a ridge or, or a mountain, if you will, <clears throat> you may think, oh, the fire is laid down. Well, no, the wind just laid the column down, and it's in a valley, but it's still moving at a fast pace, you know. Sure. So there's a lot to learn from the smoke. Now, uh, from this, from the vantage point, we're we're watching the <clears throat> upper bear mm -hmm. camera, which is a pretty good uh, yeah. vantage point from it. Yeah. You can see the the front of the fire uh, looks like it's laying down, or it, the the smoke's kind of going sideways, right. like you talked about. But then there's a far plume uh, to the south of that yeah. that's going straight up. Yep. And so that would be the head. The south end you're referring to in this case most likely would be the head of the fire. Mm -hmm. The part that's laying down on the north end of it would be the heel of the fire. So okay. real basic terminology, where the fire starts, usually that's the heel. The two sides are the right and left flanks, respectively. Mm -hmm. And then the front of the fire, where it's generally most active, would be the head of the fire. Now, also from our vantage point with this camera, you can see where they laid a, a, a line of retardant mm -hmm. down behind the fire so it doesn't burn back this way. Now, how, what are they doing, Rob? Will they be laying retardant right on the fire, around the rim? How do you attack something like so this? It's, a, it's, a, it's kind of a multi-point attack, if you will. The Gen Again, I'm speaking in, in generalities here because I'm not on this particular fire. Yeah, but and, and, and Rob, let me just let me just say, let me yeah. just say, folks, Rob's not giving any advice on how this fire should be fought. Right. He's not. He's just. We're asking him right. questions. How would you fight a fire like this? Like yeah. Perfect. A, so, a wildfire. Perfect.
perfect. So we'd like to secure the heel of the fire. We arrive at a fire like this, especially a wind-driven fire. We want to get the heel of the fire secured, meaning we want to get that extinguished. We start working up the flanks. The, the, the aircraft, be it retardant or water drops, support those operations, as well as if, if things are, um, you know, if the opportunity is there, they will drop retardant across the head of the fire to try to slow the spread so we can turn those corners, if you will, those shoulders, and uh, stop the head. Now, what you, what you might be seeing is some pre-treating that's going on with retardant. There could have been, I would assume, last night, depending on the weather, there was some kind of um, what we would call firing operation, meaning we would build containment lines, we would light fire from those containment lines, have it consume the fuel towards the main fire, and increase the width of those lines, if you will, by, by getting uh, all that fuel burned up and some good black on the ground. Now, um, Rob, earlier this morning we were listening to the uh, air attack before they really were, were getting on it, and uh, they, they were saying that we need to tie the lines together. We don't have, yep. we don't have the lines tied together, and they were given certain you know, coordinates. Yep. And so, so what does that mean, they need to tie the lines together? That means together. they need to connect them, so be it with putting in hose lays, actual fire hose on the ground and extinguishing those edges. Most likely they're building control lines using either bulldozers or hand crews where they're cutting, they're, they're, you know, cutting the brush, scraping the soil down to just bare mineral soil, could clean dirt, if you will. And they want to get all those connected so there's no gaps, meaning we don't want any unburnt fuel uh, between, you know, one hand line and another. And it's, be, it's because of that multi-point attack. You would think we would start at point A and then work all the way to point B. It doesn't always work that way. We, we come in sort of different points, and then we start working out towards each other. So are, are, are there fire units, I know this may sound silly to you, but there are, are there folks in front of this fire right now trying to stop it? Uh, most, I, don't, I mean, yes, if it's advantageous to do so, yes. There's a thing we, you know, risk versus gain, meaning is the gain worth the risk? Can we, uh, is there a likelihood of success by putting people out in front of this thing? Because obviously that's a pretty dangerous yeah, spot yeah, to be in. Yeah. But yes, many times we are out in front of it. And uh, that is how we stop these types of fires. It just depends on the actual fire activity at that point and its yeah. potential, you know. So, so what what what's going on now at the at the at the command center? So it's it's overnight. Uh, yep. There was there was an overnight IC. I yep. I would assume, and he'll be replaced if he has not He or she will be replaced probably soon with the yep. daytime command. Uh, what 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 are you looking for now? I mean, well. <clears throat> Generally what happens in something like this, the first couple of days can be kind of rough. Um, I, most likely, and I don't know this for sure on this particular fire, but the incident commander that, it, that was on that fire at 5 o'clock last night is probably still the IC right now and works throughout the night. We generally work a 24-hour shift, although early on in fires like this, sometimes our crews, our people are there for 36 hours. Wow. You know. <clears throat> We're moving right now. There's resources moving all throughout the state of California in support of this fire, believe it or not. Wow. So wow. as those resources get in the area, we start relieving crews. The, the crews will arrive. <clears throat> I'm using the term crews generally. That means fire engines, overhead, bulldozers, hand crews. As equipment and resources start arriving, they will get a briefing, an operational briefing, that gets them up to speed on, hey, this is what the fire is doing. Here's the potential. Here's some specifics mm -hmm. about this area and how you're going to be most effective and how you can safely operate out there. Once they, that briefing doesn't take usually more than 20, 30 minutes, you know, maybe an hour at the most. Once that briefing's been completed, everybody's on the same page. You remember from the Butte Fire Gym, every shift we had a document we called an incident action plan, kind of our playbook for the day. Right, right. Their leaders will get that, what we call an IEP. They'll get IEPs, and they will go to work. And as they get out there on the line, they'll relieve those crews. We don't. Just, you know, unfortunately, or I should say fortunately, just because people are tired or they've been out there all night, we don't come off the fire line until we have uh, relief. It's a one-for-one -one exchange, if you will. So you know, a new shift will be in there in place today. One thing that, that, that surprised me about the Butte fire that I learned is that uh, fires move so quickly, so fast through an area, mm -hmm. they don't burn all the fuel, and right. they can come back That's and right. burn. Uh, the fuel is is that a concern on on a large fire 
fighting a large fire or something is. like this? Especially a wind-driven fire like okay. this, because uh, we call that a reburn, and um, that's exactly right. You have a wind-driven fire that maybe consumed all the light, flashy fuels, and it preheated all the heavier fuels, the brush, the trees, etc. And now maybe the wind direction changes, or maybe the wind uh, dies off a little bit, and now you'll get um, areas that the fire has already passed through. It'll come back through again because it's Again, it's preheated, it's dried out, and uh, it's more available to burn, if you sure. will. We're talking with uh, Rob Withrow. Rob is a uh, division chief with the uh, Amador El Dorado uh, unit of CAL FIRE. The fire, we're talking about the Walker Fire, is in the Tuolumne Calaveras uh, CAL FIRE unit. Yep. We're talking generalities on how you would battle a large wildland fire, not this Walker Fire particularly. Rob, uh, how have things changed? Are, are you Are you attacking things different this year as last year and i know we don't like to say fire seasons for us right. old timers we still say fire <laughs> <You> season <too. laughs> you know what i mean it's but, right. it, but it's not fire it's fire season all year round but, right it, you know, it can be yeah uh, depending on the year it, are, are you attacking things differently as we move into this you know season? not our firefighting is pretty much the same and 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 one thing i want to say about the tuolumne calaveras unit having worked in on fires down there and, and around them uh, most of my career that is a very good, aggressive firefighting unit, and I just I assure the listeners that I may not be aware of the plan because I'm not part of that uh, incident command, but I, I assure them that there is an aggressive attack plan for that fire, mm-hmm. and uh, that is something that I think CAL FIRE, you know, we're very proud of. Is we, Our goal, again, is to keep all fires, 95% of fires, at 10 acres or less, and the way we do that is by getting in there quickly, going to work on them, and, you know, doing our best to extinguish them. So we throw a lot of resources at a fire with the hopes that we're going to contain it at 10 acres or less. Part of that includes our local government partners as well. We certainly rely on them heavily uh, to help us meet that goal. Um, Are we fighting fires differently this year? Not really. That's stayed pretty much the same. Excuse me. Evacuations are always a concern, and that changes, you know, the campfire a couple years ago really – heighten the awareness of people of how important it is to have a plan and all those things. But the thing that's really changed in terms of evacuations is the number of homes that are in the wildland. Now, when I started, almost 30 years ago when I started, it wasn't rare to have evacuations, but it was nowhere near as common as it is now. Almost every fire now is going to involve and we're going to have to evacuate people or put them on a warning. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, mm-hmm. that's different. The other difference this year, of course, and and dare I say it, is this whole COVID-19 pandemic we're dealing with. As you know, if this fire gets larger and we do open up a large base camp, our operation is going to change. We're going to, we've got some mitigations that uh, we've built into our our fire camp operation that will hopefully help, you know, limit the spread or should somebody become ill. But beyond that, um, not really. We're just still hitting them hard and trying to keep them small and no burning no outdoor burning no. all burning has been suspended in uh, yes, sir. both the uh, amador el dorado and the tuolumne calaveras unit as we move forward now into the summer months exactly uh, right very dry out there rob uh, yep. you know what's the what's the outlook for this season yeah busier so so last year we were very fortunate we had a real wet winter and spring and we had a, a less active year unfortunately that's not going to be the case this year all indications are we're going to have an above-average year for fire activity. All right. Rob yep. Withrow, listen, thank you very much. It's always a pleasure. It's an honor to talk with you. Honor uh, to talk with I don't know about that, but no problem, Jim. <laughs> thank you, Rob. You thank bet. you have very a great much. All righty. Yeah. Rob Withrow, again, uh, Rob, Division Chief with the uh, uh, Amador El Dorado Unit of CAL FIRE. And, again, this morning we were just talking how to fight a large wildland fire, not how – Cal Fire or how Rob suggests they fight this fire. It's just fighting the fire, uh, fighting fire in in general. And I uh, want to thank Rob for uh, taking the time out uh, to do that with us. Uh, we are going to be giving uh, the folks at Cal Fire a, a call if we do not hear from them within the next uh, 10 minutes or so with an update. But, uh, again, as we started out to say, the uh, Walker Fire this morning at last count was at uh, 1,000 acres. And uh, crews are, as Rob said, aggressively attacking this fire from both uh, land and air uh, again 
uh, this morning and as soon as we get an update uh, from the uh, Tuolumne uh, Calaveras Cal Fire Unit, we'll pass that along to you. J.D., uh, some more bad news actually for everyone, uh, whether you're battling the fire or not. Yeah, red flag warning uh, now in effect till 8 p.m. tonight for the southern Motherlode region, which includes both Calaveras and Tuolumne counties, according to the National Weather Service. The warning area also covers the uh, northern San Joaquin Valley. Now, a red flag warning means critical fire weather conditions either occurring now or will occur shortly. Now, building high pressure will bring gusty north to easterly winds through early tomorrow afternoon. Winds of 10 to 25 miles per hour expected with gusts up to 35 miles per hour. Daytime humidity will be low with minimum humidities ranging from 8 to 15 percent. Poor overnight recoveries will range from 30 to 50 percent. Now the combo of gusty winds and low humidity will lead to critical fire weather conditions. Lighter wind expected by tomorrow afternoon, but daytime relative humidities remain low into the weekend. A combo of strong winds, low relative humidity, and warm temperatures can contribute to extreme fire behavior. And, J.D., I've just received an update as of 7 a.m. this morning on the uh, Walker fire. The uh, incident began again just before uh, 5 o'clock last night off of Walker Trail Road uh, and uh, Hogan Dam Road in the Salt Springs area of Calaveras County. The fire is now about 10% contained, full containment unknown. Uh, it has grown in size now to 1,100 acres. There have been uh, two structures destroyed. They are believed to have been outbuildings. There are 50 structures, which would include homes, that are threatened. There are evacuation warnings in effect, warning in effect, and they include all of Circle 20 west of Pool Station Road, east of Hunt Road, and north of Highway 4. Uh, five helicopters, eight water tenders, ten engines, eight hand crews, 13 dozers, uh, aircraft. They have uh, air attack, uh, four air tankers, and uh, approximately about 400 firefighters on the ground on this right now. Firefighters worked through the night to achieve that 10% containment. North winds uh, moved the fire towards Hunt Road during the uh, night. So that is the latest on the Hunt Fire, pardon me, on the uh, Walker Fire as of uh, just moments ago. Well, the Island City Council worked its way through a list of city business at its meeting last night, including the city's budget and the status of the city pool. The council voted to continue the current year's budget until August 18th of this year. Usually, local governments start a new fiscal year and budget on July 1st of each year, but disruptions and uncertainty caused by the coronavirus have delayed the city's budget-making process. The city of Ione and Accra will operate the city pool for the summer, starting next Monday, the 22nd. New social distancing and other COVID-19-related safety measures will be in place, and swim lessons will not be offered. Both Sutter Creek and Jackson have elected not to have their city pools open this year, uh, both over virus and budget concerns. The council also last night approved a new master plan drawing of Howard Park showing both the uh, existing and future planned facilities and appointed five members to the city's newly formed Creek Committee. Well, Amador County Public Health reported an additional confirmed case of COVID-19 in Amador County yesterday and launched a contact investigation into close contacts of that new case. Now, the latest case has been linked to the case identified Monday and is an adult male in his 50s who is isolated at home in Ione. Amador County Public Health staff is monitoring all close personal contacts of the two linked cases. Now, there have now been 12 total positive COVID-19 cases in Amador County to date. One case currently hospitalized, the other, again, in isolation at home in Ione, while 10 have all recovered. Community members interested in getting tested for COVID-19 can book an online appointment for the site in Jackson by visiting projectbaseline.com. 
And as uh, I did over the air, it uh, only takes you about five minutes, maybe even less, to set up that appointment, folks. It's very, very easy. Again, at Project Baseline. Dot com. Now, the Amador County Public Health Testing Helpline may also be contacted at 223-6676. The testing is free. And that's going to wrap up a look at local news on this a Gold Country Wednesday morning. Again, want to thank Rob uh, Withrow from the Amador El Dorado unit speaking to uh, how to uh, attack and address a large fire like this. Thank you, Rob. Uh, Again, the uh, latest on the fire, 10% containment, 1,100 acres, firefighters aggressively attacking both from the ground and numerous uh, air attack, both tankers and uh, helicopters. From the KVGC News Center, I'm J.D. And I'm Jim Geedy reporting. Remember, for the latest news, traffic, and weather 24 hours a day, you can always visit our website at kvgcradio.com. Also, for the latest uh, updates on the Walker Fire, stay tuned to KVGC.